Get your bike tipped up before you go. Service your bike. Can't stress how important it is. New bikes, old bikes, but you know, make sure it's had a service just before you go on the trip. You know, nice fresh oil. If it hasn't had any for a while, check your tires over. Do you need new tires? Are you going to need new tires? You know, you could still break down on any bike. Your bike could be serviced, it could be brand new, but it's just safest to eliminate these things with a good service and a good check over. Um, peace of mind is king on the road. You don't want to be worrying about, is your bike all right? You want to know you've done everything you can to, to make that bike sound. You know, if you do break down, at least you know you tried, you did everything you could and have fun on that trip. So, another really important thing that you need to be prepared for. Um, whatever country that you're going to, you need to find out the road rules. Um, obviously in the UK we have certain rules and if you live there you know what speed limits are and but obviously every country varies. Um, a handy place that I found out loads of information on this, um, I think it just pertains to the UK, but obviously on the internet it's amazing, you can just look up anything, but um, if you Google RAC and you put in what country you're going to, it just gives you all of the rules for that country, so obviously everyone has different speed limits, um, you know, the drink drive, what the alcohol limits are in different countries, believe me, a lot of these things really vary. You don't want to go away and get into trouble because you, you're following the rules of your own country and they've obviously got different rules for theirs. So investigate that and get yourself educated. Keys. It's always good to take a spare key with you on a trip, especially a long trip. I mean, even any trip, two day, week trip, day trip, take a spare key. Put it somewhere not near the other key. Keep it separate, um, find a nice stash point. If you ever lose your key, you're, it's gonna really catch you out, especially <coughs> with um, modern bikes. Um, with the old style black key, I used to just put it in the bottom of my boot. Um, and, uh, and you know, I'm never gonna lose my boots because um, I'm not gonna go far without my boots. But hide a spare key, put it in a separate bag, or, you know, tape it inside your sleeping bag. Just somewhere safe. Keep it tucked away. And if you ever lose your key or your key gets abducted by aliens, you got that key. Okay, so we get to the legal stuff. Um, it's a bit of a boring thing to do, but um, it's probably best just to get this out of the way before you do anything else. When you're traveling to different countries, there are legal documentations that you need to have on you and they do vary from different countries. Um, so basically you just need to look this up. Um, obviously you need the international driver's license, insurance, MOT, all the normal stuff, and you need to have that on you. We um, had to have, uh, I think in Europe, you have to have your logbook, the original on you. Um, so it's probably a good idea. Get yourself a little folder, have everything in there and just start collating it together. Um, just like an example, when we went to Switzerland, you had to have um, something, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, vignetta. I get Mark to put it up in the word. Um, basically we applied for it sort of about a month before we were going to go and you have to have that on you. I think we have to have it on its display somewhere. Um, but yeah, there's all these different quirks. Like if you're going to America or Europe, you just need to Google that country and find out what legal forms that are necessary so you don't get in trouble. Um, also, in the same vein with the legal stuff is how legal is your bike? There are certain things, rules and regulations, um, like for instance, Mark's last bike, his exhaust was so loud, that definitely would have been illegal in certain countries. You don't really need to be pulled aside and, you know, it can end your road trip. Download 
road maps. Um, if you use, I mean, I use the Google Maps on my phone. Um, download them. Uh, there's plenty of videos on YouTube showing you how to do that. And basically, if you download the maps <coughs> in the areas you're going, when you lose Wi-Fi, which you will at some point, you know, even in 2023, we still lose Wi-Fi in the mountains, just in remote places, and sometimes in busy places. They just don't have your coverage. So um, if you download the maps in all the areas you're going to, you're not gonna come unstuck from when you lose Wi-Fi. You can still use Google Maps, it's great. Comfort is king if your handlebar setup's wrong. You're going to get shoulder ache, back ache, neck ache in absolutely no time. So um, don't just buy a bike, obviously, and just tear off on a two-week trip or like a 3,000 mile, whatever. This bike is really comfortable, like I say, but when we got it, the seat, the standard seat, my, my part was really comfortable, but Lisa's wasn't. I kind of opted for this removable backrest and I can't tell you how comfortable that is. It takes all the fatigue off your arms and your chest. I don't ride with a screen, so I'm taking that wind, you know, sitting at 70, 80 mile an hour, I've got that wind on my chest, pulling up my arms, but with the backrest, no problem. Hours and hours, no fatigue. Lisa's, the back seat, the rear passenger seat on um, the standard one of these was terrible. It folded away to nothing. She could only ever do an hour or two on that. But, um, so we've got the matching pillion seat to this Mustang one, and she reckons this is real comfy. It's not massively thick, but it's well thick enough. But with the backrest as well, you know, she seems to be really comfy on this, and she'll ride all day without complaining to me. You bought all your equipment, you're ready to go away. Go and test it before you actually go on that big trip. Me and Mark just did a little trip out to Brighton, stayed the night, just put up the tent, use the tram gear, cook, use everything that you're gonna take on that trip because if you go and you're 4,000 miles away and something breaks or something's just not right, you wanna find out before the big journey. Um, I'm just giving you an example, when we went away, we tried our tent out and it was a pretty warm weekend, maybe 25 degrees, and it was just stifling in the tent. So um, Mark did a bit of research. We sold that tent and we bought another one that you could take the, the top layer off and it would leave a sort of breathable freestanding tent underneath. And obviously numerous times when we was in Sicily, it was extremely hot temperatures. We sort of said, thank God that we tested that out, otherwise we'd never, we literally probably would have just slept outside and not been able to get in the tent. So these are just handy tips. You know, it doesn't take long to just go away for one night and just use everything and see if, you know, everything works properly. Tolls. If you're going anywhere, there's going to be tolls to pay. Learn what category your motorcycle is. For example, Italy, is category A. In France, it's category five. So you need to know what they are. When you pull up, obviously the machine will tell you. But if there's a car parked too close behind you, it's gonna take the weight of the car. This happens so often. I can't tell you how many times it happened. It's happened to me, it's happened to my friends. And if you don't spot it, you're gonna end up paying double or triple the money that it should have cost you. Over the course of a week or two, this could cost you hundreds of pounds and, and you shouldn't be paying it. And the worst part about it is, when you pull up at a toll <coughs> and someone's um, too close behind you, they'll start bibbing. You'll notice that the toll's wrong. So you press the help button for assistance or you can ask them to reverse back but nine times out of 10, someone's parked too close behind them. But don't get flustered, it's their fault, it's not your fault. Don't move, just press that assist button on the toll machine and eventually someone will answer and just keep saying motorcycle or more toll 
um, wrong or whatever you've got to say. I mean, if you speak the language, it's cool. But for me, I'm like, moto, moto, motorcycle. I'm not paying double. I will stand there for as long as it takes. But they get the message eventually. Don't feel flustered. I mean, I don't think the drivers do it on purpose. I mean, no one's that sinister, right? That they, they're going to come up just to screw your day up to make you pay more money. Or do they? Right. Very important tip. Learn a few key words in the language of the country that you're going in. Might seem excessive, but it's really helped me and Mark out. Um, we started doing Duolingo, learning a bit of Italian. Buongiorno, you know, ciao. <laughs> and, um, but honestly, when we got there, if you're going to go to the main places, Rome, Sorrento, then you won't have a problem. Obviously, they, you know, many people speak English and you can get by. But the minute we went to smaller towns and villages, honestly, sometimes no one spoke a word. We'd go into a petrol station and nothing. You need to, you know, how to order a cup of coffee, cappuccino, or, you know, where's the toilet? Very important things. But yeah, just literally a few words. It definitely, I definitely thought we got a lot of respect from it. They knew we were trying. They probably couldn't understand. They're probably, you know, but we tried. So one thing I'd say is um, plan, but don't over plan. Motorcycle is about freedom. Don't shackle yourself down. I think the mistake a lot of people make is like booking a two week trip or a week trip or a month trip and trying to book accommodation for every night and just, I'm gonna be here one day, I'm gonna be there the next. You know, that to me, that's, that's my worst nightmare. I mean, each to their own, but for me, nowadays with the internet, you don't need to book in advance. Um, on our Italy trip, we didn't book one accommodation. We didn't book a campsite. We went in the height of summer. We had no problems. We could never, we never could not get in a hotel. Um, even late at night or a campsite, we, we, you can get in anywhere. You have the internet now, you know, to book up. If you book every accommodation in advance, you're, you're gonna put pressure on yourself to have to be here or have to be there. Why do you want to do that? Um, and also plans may change. You know, the way you plan to go, it might be pouring with rain, it might be snowing, there might be wildfires and you've got to change. And then if you've booked all them hotels, you're going to lose that money. You might struggle to get your money back. But at the same time, as I'm saying, don't book all your accommodation. Research accommodation, that's another thing. Like. I think where we have the internet now and apps like iOverlander and even YouTube, you know, it's great to investigate campsites, hotels that are going to be along the way. Check everything, check YouTube, check Facebook, um, you know, check every platform you can, find the best places because even if you don't go there, it's good to have all these options and even if it's just screenshotting them, you find a great campsite or hotel just screenshot it save it on your phone and then when you're in that area maybe have five or six places that you've already looked up you read the reviews so you've got options you know options is what it's about but <clears throat> yeah for me everyone's different I would never book in advance unless of course you're going somewhere like Sturgis or you're going somewhere where there's a festival on or you're, you know, something's on an event, like you're going to a city and there's a, a festival on there. And if, if you know there's not going to be accommodation, if you're forced into it, obviously book it. When you've planned your holiday, most people, you know your end destination, whether it's UK to Scotland or UK to Sicily, like us, you know where the final point is. But our tip would be to have a plan B. You know, sometimes things just don't go to plan. Um, with us, we booked uh, our trip to Sicily and then a week before we had to cancel the whole thing. Um, they were having extreme floods and thunderstorms like, every day for a month. And we just thought, is it worth it? So because we hadn't booked anything, it didn't really matter. We could just, um, you know, alter our work and then we just went away a month later. But so pick your end destination 
and then research various places along the way. So you, you research more than you would possibly get to see because then if something goes wrong along the way, if you get diverted or um, there is a flood or something like that, if you've picked two or three places along you know, a, a route, you could just say, get up one morning and just go, where are we gonna go today? So if it's not, if something's happened, you just say, it's not a problem, we'll divert, we'll just go there. And um, you just don't feel like completely let down. If it's set in stone, you just feel like, oh no, 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 I've got to get there. And there could be like an accident and you're sitting in the road for like, 12 hours or something, just no, just pick somewhere else and go, we'll do that. Let's do the maths. Basically what I'm saying about that is work out the money for your road trip. Um, we knew we needed three weeks to get to the UK, to Sicily and back again. So we had to work out how much it would cost us to last on those three weeks for basically petrol, accommodation and food. So. And obviously you can only get like a rough idea because you know you don't know exactly but with the petrol mark worked out some sum he basically could roughly work out the miles it would take us to get there and back he knew that it would be about 200 to 250 miles we would get per tank um, and then he could he did some equation i don't know quite how he did it but he worked out something and he gave us a figure for the petrol the hotel and accommodation and camping, I worked out a bit more. I basically went on booking.com, you know, Googled in some of the areas like Sorrento and places we were going to, to give you a rough idea of accommodation and what the camping was. And after we looked into that, we realised that we could afford one week in hotels and we'd have to do two weeks camping. Um, so obviously you work out your own budget if you wanted to go for longer and you just thought I'd rather do camping then that's what you know you do but obviously me I needed the bath I needed the luxury every now and then so um, that gave us an accommodation budget the final one that we really had was for food which is a little bit tricky um, I did you know basically google there's loads of people on YouTube talking about how much they spend different countries um, have different expenses um, but I just researched on this. Some restaurants even put up their menus so that you could um, you know, see how much they charge for things. But we got like a daily amount, roughly. Some days we spent more going out to restaurants. And then if we'd spent a bit much, then the next day we'd go to a supermarket and we'd cook on the Trangier. Or Mark would probably cook on the Trangier. But, and then we had a miscellaneous just for like things like ferries and different things that would just come up. But we had that budget and not that I normally do this going away on holiday, but to be honest, we came within about £100 of that budget. And the reason you need to do this is you don't want to end your road trip short. You want to be able to achieve everything. So it's really important to work out, can you afford this? And then you can get a savings plan and make sure you get to do everything you want to do. So if you've made it this far, I hope that you found these tips of some value to you. And remember, if you have, stay safe and I hope you have a great road trip. Um, thanks to everyone who has liked and subscribed. And if you haven't done so far, please do so. Thanks again. See you later. Bye.